last talk of this conference. Uh, I appreciate that so many of you are still here, not rushing out for a beer or something like that. That's what I was uh, looking for. Um, um, I don't uh, intend to bother you too long. I mean, I'm, I'm known for being long in my talks, but uh, I tried not to talk more than two hours. <laughs> Um, I think this this talk is a perfect extension of what Maya talked in her in her first talk, and of course it has a connection to what Maiden said, Maiden said uh, just in his last talk. Um, so this is not about technology. So we are talking about uh, uh, the cyber protests uh, that are possible. When I when I talk to hackers, and that's not just the hackers from the Chaos Computer Club in Germany, but from hackers worldwide on conferences, um, I realize a lot of them have don't want to talk about politics. They say we are hackers; we are doing it just for fun. Uh, we have nothing to do with politics. And of course, the CCC, when it was founded, it was defined in his charter to be above party lines. I mean, hackers, we do love parties, but only if we can dance and, and, and drink and have fun, uh, but not the parties with self-declared leaders to tell us uh, what to think and what to do. Uh, but that does not mean that the hacker movement in Germany, when it was founded, was unpolitical. Uh, quite the opposite. The founders of the KS Computer Club, uh, and this is Bau Holland, one of the founders, uh, they came from a political movement when they uh, founded the hacker, uh, the hacker movement, the CCC in Germany. Because for them it was very obvious. Uh, like the Swiss philosopher uh, Pestalozzi once said, politics is shaping the way of life. And if you, as an autonomous person, are shaping your way of life, you're making politics, like it or not. Uh, and because we, as, as hackers, live in the internet, or on the internet, um, this, of course, means we have to question what does it mean to have political activities or political direct actions on the internet? What does that mean? How, what forms can that have? So our discussion uh, here will not be only about what action is legal. It's always the question, what action do we consider legitimate? And that's a very important distinction between legal and legitimate. Legality or legal has, of course, something to do with, our, with something based on a consensus in a society. People agree on what is legal and what is not. That's the reason why it can change, because people can change their mind, uh, and in the long term, probably a law can change. Uh, but if you have a legal system and you want to change something, that, of course, must be against the consensus of the society, because if it would be consensus, it would be law, it would be legal. So activities to change something will always be against the consensus. So to do that, you need brave people. You need people to take up a position. You need people to pursue that against the mainstream and the general disinterest in the society. And you need people that are willing to endure the consequences of their action. Because whatever you do, you have to take the consequences. Legitimate protest, of course, um, is the question, what is the moral justification? It's not the law justification, but the moral justification of an action. And that, of course, does not have to match the interpretation of law. Like in the Arab Spring, just two years ago, three years ago, uh, just like in Mutlang, decades ago, uh, the action that was taken was definitely not legal. It was illegal, but we all consider that legitimate. Um, and of course, as I said before, what is law can change over time. So like in the case of Mutlang, when the people sit down for a sit-in, that was a criminal act, it was considered a criminal act, until 10 years later, or nearly 15 years later actually, 
uh, the highest court in Germany decided, no, it's not illegal, it's not no kind of duress, it's actually considered constitutional and protected with freedom of assembly. So a sit-in in Germany nowadays is no longer illegal, uh, it's legal. Of course, the question is, for us as hackers, what do we consider legitimate? What's our moral side rail, so to speak, uh, for our actions in cyberspace? And uh, like in the talk before, we call that hacker ethics. It's not such elaborate uh, thing like uh, the Nicomachean ethics from, uh, from Aristotle, but nonetheless, uh, it's our guidelines of how to, to live in, on the internet, but it says nothing about protests at least not in its original form. So we are actually thinking and working on extending this hacker ethics to be a little bit more up to date. Um, as hackers we can say the internet for us is something like an extension of public space. I mean everyone knows the public space, that's space that belongs to everyone and the internet in a, in a certain sense is an extension of public space. And for us as digital natives, that means that we demand rights and obligations in this new public space. Um, and in, in, the, in the public space AFK, away from keyboard, or what other people call the real life, I don't think that's a good term, real life, because real life is on the internet, um, you know, this thing is AFK. Um, these rights have been fought over centuries, or at least decades, very hard. So uh, rights have never been given away for free at any point in time, uh, but always had to be won by few for the many. And that's still true today. And the right of political protest, so to speak, a meta right, because you are fighting for a right to have rights, um, is coded in the hacker ethic. It says mistrust authorities. And we need to manif manifest that idea in the, in the public space on the internet. Um, if, we, if I talk about political actions on the internet, uh, which I would call digital direct actions, uh, we need um, a very sophisticated consideration and evaluation of these actions. Why? Uh, because there are people out there that consider any political activity on the internet as cyber terrorism. So whatever you do on the internet in a political sense, it's considered cyber terrorism. Um, and as long as that is the case, there will be no social peace on the internet. And these people have one thing in mind. They want to criminalize the form. They want to criminalize how you protest on the internet. Uh, to discredit and even to criminalize the reason why you do that in the first place. Uh, so the most important issue of all, we should not reduce the form of political, how we consider the, the political protest just by its pure form. I mean, this guy has probably something to say. Uh, so just looking at what he's doing is simply not enough. We must ask, why is he doing it? What's, what's, what's his concern? What do he want to say? What, what do he want to change? Um, and we have to do that above all, for all our political protests on the internet. So reason and concern for the protest is always the primary, must always be the primary focus. Um, otherwise, we support the strategy of the cyber terrorism preachers, but because we reject the form, we reject the reason. Um, when I when I will talk about uh, digital protest or digital direct actions on the internet, as I said, we always have to to, to consider the or put the focus on the concern. Um, and to do that, I will find analogies for digital protest in the real world. I mean, we do not invent new forms of protest uh, by chance, so we, we, I try to f get, get an analogy of a, a digital direct action and a normal direct action, so we can pick up people from what they understand, from what they already know and, and heard about. 
But of course, these analogies will have limitations, especially when it comes to jurisdiction. Uh, I will talk about uh, uh, how these forms of protest uh, are, are seen from the law point of view. Um, and I will do that especially for the Western countries. I don't know where, uh, how certain forms of protest uh, are punished in, in other countries. I have no idea. So I especially know that for, for Germany and, and Switzerland probably. But I think in Western countries it's more or less all the same. Um, if, we, if we talk about political protest in general, and I, I think all of you recognize this image, or at least know what it is about. It's uh, an image from a, from a protest uh, of the Occupy movement, uh, which says we are the 99%. Um, and now this Occupy movement basically has gone. I mean, you do not read about them anymore, at least not much. Uh, there are very, very few active people in the movement today. Um, so it's, it's necessary to ask one question, it's the question about the effectivity of political protest in general. Can political protest, as we know it, can, can it change something at all? Or is it just something that the protests feel good, uh, f have, a, have a kind of uh, community feeling, but does it really change something? And there is one group of philosophers and uh, writers in France, which is called Tikkun, um, which exactly uh, questioned that political protest can change anything. Because they say um, political counter movements are always embedded uh, and trapped in the, in the current system of thinking, uh, and therefore cannot change something really substantially. They can only change small things. Think about people going on strike for a better payment, which is a legitimate form of protest, we all agree. But they do not change, they do not really ask for a real change. They do not ask, why do I have to work for someone instead with someone? They do not ask, why do I have to get money for my work? They do, not have to, they do not question the monetary system in general. No, they just want a little bit more money, but basically all the other rules are still the same. So, did it change something? I mean, this is a little bit like something hackers know from the Matrix trilogy. This is when Neo, the, the chosen one, met the architect, uh, and the architect tells him, uh, you're nothing than the inevitable escalation of deviations in the system we can't handle in our model. And your only job is to be a corrective for an otherwise homeostatic um, system to find a new equilibrium. I mean, that's exactly the point. Can, can a protest really change something? Or is it just a, a pressure valve for the existing system to stay the same? but just on a different, in a different equilibrium. I think we have to, to question that. Maybe we shouldn't do it now, because uh, otherwise I would talk for three hours. Um, so, but I will come back to it uh, at the end of my talk a little, uh, for a little uh, uh, more comments on that. Okay, I already said our primary focus must be why we are protesting. Um, if we think about new forms of political protest on the internet, that's something we should always have in focus. But um, in the rest of my talk, I will not talk about what to achieve, but I will talk about how to achieve it, how to do political protest without th talking about why we should do that. Um, and I will develop a model, I think, that explains uh, uh, how forms of digital protest, digital direct actions uh, can be viewed and uh, evaluated. And this form is an escalation, like a cascade. Um, and the classification is based on the ferocity of the form. So uh, uh, harmless actions are on the bottom and it, the more you go to the top, it's uh, the more violent, not, not violent, but ferocity, the more ferocity you have in this action. 
Um, and of course, there are smooth transition, transitions between these forms. Um, the reasons why I did that are threefold. Uh, first of all, I think if we concentrate on just one form of political protest, uh, we will exclude a lot of people because they say that's not our way to, to do protests. So we must offer a lot of protest forms so everyone can find his own way of, of protesting. Um, and if we do that, this cascade becomes a pyramid because more people will uh, agree to perform less ferocity in their action uh, than others. So only a very few will be uh, willing to take high risks to do um, to do, uh, I will not say violent, but uh, punishable forms of, of action. Um, and secondly, because this cascade also has something to do with the protection system. I mean, let's take Greenpeace. I mean, you can, as a Greenpeace <coughs> supporter, you can either go to a protest march or you can climb on a smokestack. I mean, very few people that support uh, uh, Greenpeace actually climb a smokestack. It's not just because it's uh, quite dangerous in itself to climb a, a smokestack, but of course you have to break a lot of laws to do that. You have to cut a hole in the fence of the, uh, of the installation to get on the ground. Uh, you have to climb up and violate uh, a trespassing, or you, you commit trespassing and violate property rights uh, from the owners. So uh, it, it's quite a heavy action. Going on a protest march on the other side is not a problem. But these two, of course, are interconnected. I mean, if Greenpeace would have only consisted of people climbing smokestacks, we would have no, we, we have, would have no Greenpeace anymore because they would be all in prison, uh, 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 jailed for eco-terrorism uh, because they violated so many laws. But because so many other people in reality go on protest marches, uh, they actually protect these smokestack climbers because they say, yeah, it's not our form of protest, but we have the same goal. And therefore these guys on the smokestack are protected. And that's true for all the forms of our protest on the internet as well. Lower levels of these uh, digital direct actions protect the higher levels. And the third is, of course, um, a question of appropriate means. I mean, you do not use the heaviest tools in your toolbox just because you have it. I mean, you try to, to start from the bottom and, and try to reach your goal with, it, with uh, uh, lower levels of protest, and if that does not work, uh, you climb up the ladder. Okay, so let's go to these, these levels as I see them. The first level is very easy, it's free speech. And free speech on the internet, of course, means uh, you have something like banners. That was quite popular when, uh, when the internet came up. You do not see it uh, uh, very much nowadays. Uh, the Blue Ribbon campaign from the EFF was quite, quite popular. Uh, I think because programmers love recursion. Because, I mean, it was using free speech to propagate the right for free speech. I mean, that's, in a way, in a recursion, uh, very popular. Um, AFK, of course, you have people wearing t-shirts, t-shirts like me, or having buttons uh, uh, with a political message. That's an expression of your opinion. It's a free speech thing, um, and it's basically accepted everywhere, in, in, in our Western countries at least, as a legal form of political action. I mean, most of you probably do not consider that a political action, but it actually is. Um, and even it's a very important one because it is very essential for group building. People belonging to the same peer group, sharing ideas, sharing values, uh, they can express these connection to, to the community by having the same banners or wearing the same t-shirts. Um, so maybe this is even the most important form of political process at all because it's the group building level. As I said, uh, from a juristical point of view, it's very unproblematic. It's protected by freedom of speech laws uh, or even the constitution in most cases. 
um, and the content is when it is a political uh, when it is something uh, uh, that can give uh, 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 juristical problems then it's not the form but the content so if you in Germany replace the blue ribbon with a swastika uh, you can of course run in trouble um, uh, and it's even punishable so there are limits for freedom of speech in basically every country um, and it's the question should we agree with that empty headed um, it was Rosa Luxemburg that once said freedom is always the freedom of the dissenter of the person who thinks different from you it's not about your freedom I mean when the Americans uh, uh, signed the constitution it says all men are born equal and free of course not the slaves it was their freedom of the white man, of the people who signed the constitution who claimed these rights for them but in reality, when we talk about freedom, we always have to talk about the freedom of speech for people with opinions we don't like. We have to accept them. We have to stand them. And there is no, no mind crime like uh, 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 Orwell described in his, uh, in his book. From the point of hacker ethics, we always should judge people by what they are doing and only by what they are doing. Um, and it's, of course, okay to, to, to oppose them with your own free speech, with your own opinion, uh, but it's not okay to censor them, to, to, to have censorship to, to uh, prevent them from their right to execute freedom of speech. I mean, that's a very important issue, but I will not elaborate on that as well. Okay, the second step is what we call petition. So... Uh, and now it's a more active form of uh, uh, of protest. I mean, we all know that AFK. You walk around with the with a sheet of paper and talk to people and say, "Ah, we are against this, or we want to want to have that." Uh, do you agree? You can sign. You can sign our petition. Um, and of course, that is very easy to uh, uh, to transform into the internet. Uh, it's done in many places, so you can you can uh, uh, sign petitions on the internet uh, for whatever reason. I mean, it's up to you to make up your own petition and say, let's see how many people will sign that. Uh, but of course, there is a difference between a petition in AFK and on the internet. And the reason is, I mean, if you're a politician and uh, uh, the postal office comes with a van to deliver 100,000 letters, that makes a huge difference from having 100,000 emails in your inbox. I mean, you don't even have to look at the emails in the inbox, you can simply delete it. So the, the felt impact of, uh, uh, of, a, of a petition uh, on the internet is of course lower uh, than in real life, or in, in AFK, uh, but it's still is something that you can use easily to express your opinion as a group and to show others that a lot of people agree with you. Um, okay, the juristical uh, assessment is the same as on the first level, it's protected by freedom of speech, so no, no consequences to be feared, at least not in Western countries. Okay, now the next thing is what, we, what I call web graffiti. Um, I mean, we all know graffiti in, on the walls and on the houses and stuff like that. So people expressing their opinion uh, by uh, just painting something on the wall. Um, and they, they do it with, with sprays or they do it with unlicensed bill postings. So they, they have printed things, they, they glue to the wall, uh, which is basically the same thing. Uh, a lot of these activities can be used for political protest as well. Um, so how can that look like, how, what, what can be the equivalent of such an action on the internet? Um, and I think that the equivalent can be web defacement. I mean, like, if you, if you, def if you deface a website, uh, it's like replacing content 
on a wall with your own content. The point and problem is that most web defacements on the internet are just a pure act of vandalism. So uh, they don't do it for political reasons, but basically most of the graffitis we see on walls are the same. They just are group tags or name tags. Uh, they seldom carry a political message. Um, but if they do, uh, um, I consider them direct action. And the same for, for web defacements. Most of the web defacements that happen are just what you see here. Someone said, ah, I hacked your web face. Web, uh, web, website. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something more sophisticated. Uh, so you can have web defacements where you really transport a political message. Sorry, this is in German. I didn't find that uh, in English. Uh, it basically said you can't you can't see these uh, uh, website because anonymous didn't provide the uh, required freedom rights to see it. Um, So, there are ways uh, we can think about web defacement as something similar to graffiti. Maybe we don't even have to replace the whole website. Maybe we, we took only a part of it, because normal, normal graffiti does not cover the whole wall. It's just a part of it, so maybe we, we take just a, a small part of the website for, for uh, transporting the political message, or something like a pop-up maybe. Uh, Probably not a good idea. Uh, but so to, to, to get this form of digital action away from being vandalism, so that everyone who sees it can understand, okay, this is a form of political protest. Um, Juristically, well, in Germany, until some years ago, uh, it was a felony to have graffiti on a wall. So in the worst case, you have to pay the owner the cost to remove the graffiti, that's all. Uh, nowadays, it's an offense. You can be actually jailed. I don't know if that really happened, but uh, the law uh, gives this possibility now. Um, and the same for the internet digital direct action. So if you do a web defacement, it's the cyber terrorist preachers I talked before, they said this is a criminal act, uh, and yes, you can be punished for up to five years uh, uh, for, for web defacement. And it can get even worse if you do it in sensible areas like government or military. So um, look out. Okay, let's, let, let me give a quite short parenthesis of the first three levels we now have. Um, we should not judge them by their efficiency to change something. We should judge them by the effect they have on the group of protesters. They are the three levels that form a group that say, we belong together, we have the same values, we have the same thing we want to achieve, uh, and therefore they are very, very important. Um, the next level I will call web boycott, and that's pretty similar to what we have from the, from the normal form of protest. Uh, everyone knows a strike and the boycott. I mean, uh, the differentiation between, between a boycott and a strike is just a question of where you are. If you are an employee of a customer and don't work for them anymore, you are on strike. And if you are a customer of a company and uh, uh, boycott them uh, and, and, and do not uh, sell, buy their goods, uh, you are boycotting them. So it's basically the same form of action. It's just a question of where you are, if you are inside or outside the company or the institution or whatever you have as a target. Um, it's a very, very special form of, of protest, also, in, uh, uh, also AFK, uh, because you disturb or try to interrupt processes and functions of the institution or the company you want to, to boycott or to, to strike. Um, and it's basically done to gather the attention of the general public, mainly for solidarity. So to show the general public what you really want. So it's a, it's a mean uh, to raise attention. Uh, and of course, you can you can do that on the internet as well. Um, but it's important to embed 
such an action into the, into the first free level, uh, because doing nothing uh, is hardly to, uh, is, it's hard to recognize a non-action as a political statement. I mean, everyone is doing nothing in, cons in relation to a certain thing, so you have to transport your, your message more, more clearly to make, sure, to make sure that everyone understands you're doing nothing for a certain reason. And not just because you don't care or whatever. Um, so the problem, of course, is the uh, the, the motivation to, to get people to to take part in a boycott. Um, but the legal side is very easy. There has been in the EU. Oops. Let me see. Okay. Um, the, the, there is a there is a EU charter to uh, make sure that everyone can participate in the strike and in the boycott, and it's protected by the EU constitution. So, uh, in, in 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 European countries, uh, this form of protest is of course to is, is of course accepted. Um, and actually, that's easy to explain. Uh, inactivity is rarely criminal, uh, criminally liable. I mean, I think the only case is if you fail render to assistance. So if you see a, 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 an injured person and do not help, uh, then your inactivity can be, can, you can be liable for that. But in all other cases, I mean, you, you can't be forced to buy a product or something like that. Okay, the next level of of web boycott is what I call DEMO or the protest march. Um, and the protest march is probably the best known form of political protest AFK. I mean, uh, everyone has, every one of you have been on one, I'm sure, or at least saw one. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very well known and it's a very effective form of political protest. Uh, and it's the first form of political protest that has no no real equivalent on the internet. And that's for four reasons. I mean, uh, a protest march is a collective expression of opinion. I mean, the people going to, to, a, to a protest march, they do it wittingly, they know what they are doing, and they want to express a common opinion. Um, the protest march requires you to be physically present. I mean, you can't be away and say, I've been to a protest march. No, you have to be there and actually walk with the group. Um, the primary target uh, of such a, such a protest march, of course, is the general public, because the general public notices you. I mean, if you walk with, with a thousand or a hundred thousand people through a city, uh, you stop the, the, the traffic. Uh, people will see you, even if they have not planned to see you, they will see you by chance. Uh, they will know and will learn about your, your concerns. That's, that's very, very, very important. And uh, the real target of your, of your political protest will know a lot of people agree with this opinion. So it's, a, it's to show them that a lot of people are of, uh, share, your, share your beliefs and, and want to change something. Um, but how do you do that on the internet? I mean, how do you do a protest march on the internet? I mean, there have been, been tries. Uh, like this uh, Second Life demo, like the Second Life protest march. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the reaction people love about it. I mean, it, no one takes that serious. Um, so, at the moment, at least, we have no real, no real equivalent on the internet for, for a protest march, which is sad, because that's, in AFK, it's the most important form of political protest at all. And we have nothing equivalent on the internet. So if anyone of you can come up uh, with something good for to replace, or not to replace, to extend uh, uh, um, uh, a protest march on the internet, I would love to hear that. Retweets. Hmm? Retweets. Tweets, maybe, yes, yes. Yeah, good idea. 
we should talk about that afterwards because I want uh, I don't want to prevent uh, uh, anyone here from having the, the uh, uh, party at the end of the Congress uh, so I try to, to hurry up a little bit um, protest march at least in the uh, uh, in AFK are of course protected there is a special uh, European Council uh, 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 charter on fundamental rights and it says everyone has the right to for freedom of assembly so anyone can meet and connect with other people at any place at any time uh, it doesn't say anything about being physically present so I think uh, even if we find a good form of political protest on the internet for a protest march, uh, it will be protected by, by constitutional laws. Okay, now we come to the really interest, more, much more interesting uh, uh, activities. Uh, I call it sit-in. I mean, every one of you know what a sit-in is. Uh, I talked about it earlier a little bit. Um, and in the internet, I think an internet sit-in is a DDoS attack. I think, I think that's exactly the same quality compared to a, a sit-in AFK. Um, and the uh, activities from, from Anonymous, which is most famous for, for its DDoS attacks in the last, uh, in the last time, uh, a lot of activists actually uh, uh, participated in such events. So there's a good mobilization. It actually had good media attention. I mean, it's very important for, for, for anyone who do uh, political protests that uh, the protest is reported about in the media. I mean, otherwise most of the people will not even know uh, you, have, uh, you, are, uh, you have protested. And the general public even admitted a political motivation to Anonymous. So it was really a political protest. It was considered a political protest. Um, so, um, the attacked institutions or companies or whatever, they of course see that a completely different way. Um, they say it's a DDoS attack. I said it before as well, sorry. But they say it's a DDoS attack and by just choosing that word, attack, they criminalize the form. I mean, they say, by just this wording, they say it's a criminal act. Um, and the same is with a lot of supporters. They also say we did a DDoS attack. Uh, I think we should change that word to something like probably just DDoS event or uh, just DDoS or whatever. Uh, but as I said before, these things are really comparable to, to sit-ins uh, that took place uh, uh, on the street. It's, a disturbing, it's disturbing the processes and function, just like a boycott or a strike, but you do it more actively. But it's very important to notice it's a non-violent uh, 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 form of protest. There is no permanent damage done. I mean, if you sit on the street, uh, the moment you get up, the street is functional as it was before. And the same is true for a DDoS attack. The very moment the DDoS, uh, the DDoS event ends, uh, the service are usable. There is no permanent damage. Um, so I think we should judge the DDoS and the sit-in in the same way, juristically. Of course, that is not the case. Um, I said that uh, the sit-in on the street is now legal in Germany. I don't know if that's true for all countries in, in Europe. Uh, it's protected by the, by the German constitution. But of course, DDoS is still considered uh, 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 cyber terrorism, and you're actually liable of prosecution if you if you got caught. And there are always people who get caught uh, uh, by police uh, and have to have to go to court. Um, I think we as hackers have to rethink our attitude to these people who are doing DDoSes as well. Um, I'm very, very sad that, for example, the KS Computer Club um, is neglecting those activists, hacktivists, uh, any solidarity. I mean, even the KS Computer Club, or parts of the KS Computer Club, say these guys are doing criminal acts. I don't think that's correct. I think we should, we should uh, support 
we, sh we should support the hacktivists because they are doing something very legitimate. Uh, they are doing it in a non-violent way because they are hurting no one. Uh, everything is functional afterwards. Uh, so I think it's very important for us as hackers to give these people a moral support, a solidarity, even if we say we won't do it ourselves. Okay, now we come to the top of the pyramid, the Omega actions. And um, these actions are something most people will not consider is, mo some people will not consider them legitimate anymore. Uh, uh, but I will present them nonetheless because I think they are important. Um, the first one is executing your rights, even if you don't have them. Uh, at least if you, you execute your legitimate rights, not your legal rights, your legitimate rights. Um, and one of, uh, uh, an example in AFK is of course Rosa Parks, which in, I think it was 1955, if I remember correctly, yeah, 55, simply refused to give up her seat in the bus for a white person, because she was a black person, uh, and black persons were required to leave their seats when a white person could come. And, and she said, no, I, I, it's my legitimate right to sit here. Um, I, will not give my, I will not give up my seat. And this refusal of her, that actually kick-started the American Civil Rights Movement, which ultimately led to the abolishment of the racial separation in America. So it is the moral strength of one person that can change a lot. Um, and very similar, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who in 1930 said, uh, of course we as Indians do have the right to get salt from, from seawater, whatever the English uh, uh, rulers say. And he simply executed that right. Uh, and this action actually singled, signaled the end of the English domination in India. So um, such actions can really change a lot. But of course we have examples in the digital realm as well. I mean, that's where we live. Um, and I, I'm old enough, I've, I've joined the KS Computer Club in 1985. Uh, so I've been uh, in the hacker movement for quite a while. Um, and at that time, it was illegal to connect a telephone, uh, to connect a modem from, bought, bought from America or even self-built. Uh, to connect such an, a device to the telephone network. Um, it was punishable with five years, uh, or as well, Holland always said, it's more punishable than the uh, accidental uh, uh, ignition of a power plant, atomic power plant, which was only punishable with three years. Um, but of course, we as hackers never considered that a legitimate uh, uh, act, so we said, who cares about uh, uh, what we can do? We buy our haze modems uh, in America uh, and connect them to the internet, uh, connect them to the telephone network. Something nowadays nobody can even in Germany can, 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 can imagine that it was illegal to connect a modem to the telephone network, to, do, to connect to other computers. I mean, nowadays it's so normal. But at that time it was illegal. Um, but we said, we don't care, it's our right to do that, we simply do it. Today, I mean, uh, I think a good example for that is Wikileaks, uh, which gives uncensored access to public relevant data wherever it can get its hand on. Um, of course, that's illegal in most, uh, in most countries. Um, and it's the braveness, as I said in the beginning, it's the braveness of a few uh, to stand up for this right. It's, it's Chelsea, Chelsea Manning and Ed Snowden uh, who actually take high personal risks to make sure that this information is available to everyone. So, uh, doing what you think is right is a very anarchistic uh, principle. Just behave as if the law is as the way you want it to be. And don't care what the real law looks like. And tomorrow, who knows? I mean, maybe it's illegal to use Tor in the future. So, I mean, there are countries around uh, France, 
I th I'm not sure if, if it's still the case in France, but Russia, uh, which has still limitations on, on encryption. So you can't encrypt. Uh, I mean, it's, it's always a question if it's prosecuted by, but by law, it's uh, still regulated. So people are not allowed to use uh, uh, encryption without key escrow and stuff like that. So we have to take, so there are good examples where it's, where it's necessary to, to perform your right as if it's already there. Never give up your right for anonymity, for anonymity and privacy. Okay, and the last step, the very tip of the pyramid, is what I would call the escalation. I mean, escalation in, in, on the street happens from time to time. Uh, and especially it happens when other forms of protest simply do not work. When they are neglected by, by the general public, if they are ignored by the media. So people sometimes do not see another chance to, to, uh, to change something than by becoming a militant group. Uh, and they are, of course, then d deliberately outside of any, of any uh, legal protection or uh, outside the ruling jurisdiction. And very, very, very few people can consider that as a leg legitimate act uh, of, of protest. I mean, most people would say, no, these are a bunch of criminals. Uh, uh, nobody sane is doing something like that. Um, is that terrorism? I mean, if this word, word terrorism makes sense at all, it's probably exactly here. That's, that's true. I mean, regardless if you have a positive or negative connotation to terrorism. Um, because a logical or physical attack on the network infrastructure, for example, is of course has a much larger impact than, let's say, burning down a department store. I mean, the impact for the, for the general public in case of, a, of an attack on the, on the infrastructure is, of course, much greater. So why do I mention this form of protest at all? Uh, because, as I said, if I, I'm convinced if the lower forms of protest, the less fierce forms of protest, are criminalized just because of their form, people will ultimately come to this point where they see no other way than to do than to behave in exactly this way, but not on the street, but on the internet. Um, so uh, this criminalization of the form may actually provoke such an escalation, because if you have nothing to lose, so what? And maybe it leads to a formation of a digital army fraction, just like the Red Army fraction uh, uh, in Germany in the, in the 70s. Um, and we can only prevent that from happening by looking at the other forms of digital protest uh, in a more differentiated way and to accept that these are forms of legal, of legitimate and probably they should even be legal forms of protest. So let me come back to this question of the effectivity of moderate uh, political actions because that's the reason why people get militant because they say there is no change if I, if, I, if I use a moderate form of, of, protection, uh, of, of protest. Um, so it's the question if change, change conditions, if we can only change conditions within the old set of rules. And I think there are a few developments in society uh, that makes it impossible to keep up the old rules any longer. I think the increasing, increasing uh, precarization of educated middle class people uh, makes a new set of rules inevitable. I mean, this system can't go on for much longer uh, uh, because too many people are simply outside of the rules and see no future within staying within the, uh, within the old system. I mean, look, look at countries like, like uh, Spain or, or Greece where 60, nearly 70% of the young people are unemployed. I mean, they see simply no, no way to, 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 to have a future in the old system. Um, and that will ultimately lead to, uh, to a change in whatever way. So why I'm giving this talk at all? I mean, uh, I, I'm convinced we must extend our political actions into the internet. That's my, 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 my belief. 
Um, and I think we need the hacktivists to, to promote these forms of protest on the internet. And I demand solidarity from all hackers with such actions, because if, if, we, if we agree with the concerns, if we agree with the reasons why these protests took place in the first uh, took place in the, uh, at all. I mean, we should give these persons who dare to perform them, we should give them our solidarity. I think that's necessary. Um, okay, so to do that, I ask you for three things. I ask you for, to use your brain, uh, to develop new positions and new forms of protest. I mean, this Twitter idea isn't too bad. Um, and be smart with arguing, arguing for these uh, uh, new positions and uh, for your concerns. Uh, find the braveness in your heart to defend these positions against the, the mainstream and the general disinterest. And keep your hands on the keyboard. Develop new tools for the political hacktivists. Um, write a new bootloader for society. And if you're done with that, go and look for the reset button. And if you do that, I say happy hacking in this sense, and thank you for your attention, and now let's have a party. Any questions? I would just uh, like to ask you something uh, about the um, relevance of the keyboard and away from keyboard part in the world where we uh, see upcoming wearable devices. The, do you think that uh, form of uh, internet protest can be also in real life or away from keyboard? For example, some kind of augmented reality protest yeah. march. I, I, I mean, it's very important to understand that what, what I presented as forms of digital protest should not replace protest in the classical way. I should, they should extend and support uh, uh, these actions. And I mean, I think it's not a myth, myth that uh, uh, Twitter and, uh, and Facebook actually helped promoting the, the, the Arab Spring revolutions in, in, in Tunisia, in, in Nigeria, in, 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 uh, in Egypt. So, I mean, the internet is actually playing a role in organizing forms of classical protests already, and that's a good thing. So it's more about extending the protest into the internet itself. Um, so I agree, yes, maybe we can, uh, we can find tools to, to actually organize spontaneous demonstrations much easier than we do if we have to, to, to talk to people all the time and organize it in a friend circle or whatever. So you can reach much more people in a short time uh, for such actions probably. Yes, just, just, just to back on your uh, topic, uh, I think that uh, uh, actions, AFK actions like uh, anti-SOPA protests, uh, actually were uh, about, uh, you know, people who are very concerned about the future of the internet. Yeah, yeah. It is because of the internet. <laughs> yes, but, but, but of course I would not say that the Arab Spring uh, 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 movement was actually c concerned about the internet. I mean, they had immediate problems with their economy, uh, 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 with, their, with their state structure. No, that's the other like topic, that. yes. Yeah, Uh, so again, thank you for giving this talk. Uh, some of it was very interesting. Um, I have a couple quick comments, though. Uh, one, you, you've lumped a few of your topics into really kind of one idea, uh, which is you mentioned web boycott, uh, you mentioned sit-ins, uh, and you mentioned demos, which uh, at their core really all come down to the same thing, which we've seen lately, which is DDoS. Uh, but the idea that when a DDoS goes away, all of the problems simply resolve themselves is an entire misnomer. Uh, this forgets all of the systems administration, 
the network administration, all of the other customers who feel a catastrophic side effect by the means of this protest. You, you mentioned earlier that you know one form of protest, uh, I, I forget which one you had it in your in your pyramid, uh, was similar to walking down the street and shutting a street down. Uh, in a DDoS, this is what you were doing. You were shutting parts of the entire internet down. Uh, you were causing catastrophic effects to the rest of the internet by doing so. Uh, and really, in this, uh, the backscatter comes into the same play with web defacement. Uh, what this ignores is that when you deface a website, you're gaining access, privileged access to a system that also gives you access to email, that gives you access to potentially other sensitive information that has nothing to do with defacing the website. So while I agree with you that politics on the internet play a very important place and that political activism is very important, I think most of what your points ignore is that there's a huge backscatter here of the other damage and the other ramifications that cause massive and severe problems that most people seem to ignore. Uh, anonymous, Occupy, you mentioned that very few people are really active in Occupy anymore. The main reason for this was they never had a point. Uh, they had a bunch of arguments, they had a bunch of complaints, but never once were they able to sit down and clarify, this is what we are angry about. Anonymous is jokingly referred to as a weapon of mass chaos, because if you point Anonymous at something, they will simply go after it. How do you take a political group seriously which doesn't actually advocate most of the time for a political correctness or a political friendliness when in most cases it's simply what are we annoyed about today, what are we pissed off about today, who do we feel like attacking today? How, how do you find that? I, I mean, that's the, I mentioned Tikkun, the, the French group, um, which, which wrote two, two books uh, I think relevant in this context. One of them is The, the Coming Insurrection. Uh, and the second one is cybernetics and resistance. Um, and they actually said, um, what you mentioned, how can we take them seriously, means that this group only operates within the given limits of the system, or in, with the given rules of the system. So uh, it's impossible for them to change anything. To, ch to make a real change, you have to be completely outside the, 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 the normal rules which makes it impossible for normal people to get your message in the first place. Um, so I'm not sure if, if that's the reason behind, behind Occupy. I mean, I, I've read a lot of uh, David Graeber's text. I mean, I can't find any reference to that. But um, it's, it's the attempt to, to have new rules. Maybe, maybe we can say it failed. I don't know. I'm not sure if it failed. Maybe we see the effects in a few years. Maybe we don't see them immediately. Um, Hard to tell. You made an interesting point early on in your discussion where you were talking about people protesting for higher wages and so on. Yeah. Uh, and you said perhaps it is time to think about mm, that they think about why are they working for the money and why are they working for these things. And I guess my only point in response to your entire talk uh, is why are we still looking at activism in a way that we consider something like DDoS an actual form of protest? I, I guess my point is that DDoS is not a form of protest. What should we be looking at? What is activism in tomorrow's world? What is true activism? Because it is not taking the internet down. I mean, I think that's the point where, where people can start to argue what's what's the right way to do it. I mean, um, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe hackerspaces uh, 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 something non-protest way of uh, uh, of having new ideas can have the more can have more effect on, on society than a protest. Maybe yes. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're not. Who knows? Putting down a neighborhood is not as effective as protesting. Uh, protesting and saying this is wrong is, is much more effective than burning the neighborhood down. Yeah. The DDoS is burning the neighborhood down. I, I think that's the, I, I wouldn't agree technically on that argument. I mean, uh, most people don't realize there is a, a huge DDoS running because their internet connection slows down. That's a myth. I mean, they read about it in the papers. They read about it in the in the on the web blogs. Uh, that's something that that happened. I mean, it's not burning the the uh, 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 it's not burning the neighborhood down. I mean, uh, my, from my point of view. Um, there's there's a common English saying uh, which goes something along the lines of, you know, you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Um, and that's where you, where you said also comes into the hackerspaces and things like that. Hackerspaces are absolutely fantastic. The new civil hacking movement is fantastic and things like that. Those guys have more of a chance of getting things done than people like Anonymous doing what they're doing. Because when regular people out there look at what Anonymous does, they see a bunch of the, the it's, 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 it's even worse than how a lot of people viewed you know, the Occupy movement. It's, it's far worse because these are a bunch of kids who are scaring people, and all of a sudden they are creating the impetus. They're, they're, they're a catalyst now for, for 
for governments and people like that to start implementing uh, new and interesting ways of of uh, you know protection, uh, new uh, new reasons for why they need backdoors and systems and things like that. Uh, it's just that they're making it difficult for the rest of the people, the rest of the hacker spaces, the rest of the civil hackers who want to work on making everything a better place, making the world a better place. It's making it more difficult, you know. Okay, I can't actually okay. I can't actually comment on that. I mean, I think you expressed an opinion, and uh, I, I appreciate that. All right.